and the, the top bar, it will change the length accordingly, depending on the location. So that, that was very handy, and, and it's very quick to do this, try to do this in another software, and <laughs> yeah, it will take ages. But the next problem is that I need to, loc to locate each of the Blender objects exactly where the anchor needs to be. We are talking about millimeters of accuracy that we need to provide to, for the builders to make this uh, work. But I'm going to do it. Well, maybe, yeah, you can see here the anchor, the Blender anchor in the exact location. So maybe it's time for Super Blender. <coughs> but you might say, don't be silly. What are you going to do? Are you going to get the default queue, put in a cape, and put it flying around in the Blender scene, and then put a hero position at the end? No, I'm not talking about that. <coughs> I'm talking about using, <laughs> about using, thank you. I'm talking about using Python plus Blender, and then you get Super Blender. But I had a problem. I had coding phobia, and I think some of you might have it too. But yeah, how, how you overcome this topic, like, I know that maybe all of you, you want to get more into coding, but you look too afraid because it's so complicated. But it's easy, just to, you have to keep it simple. Start with the basic. I started coding for kids, making easy games, keep it interesting and fun. It's like, I've been trying to learn French, and sometimes on YouTube I, I check Peppa Pig in French. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but you start getting used to the, the, this language, this new language. And it's the same with Python. So, and most of the time, in my coding, I just use for loops and if statement. That's the only thing that I, that I use. Well, not the only thing, but mo most of the time. So I'm going to show you here how the, the for loop works. Well, the, the video is running. But you can see that. Um, for i, which is like a, a variable. And then we have something called here selected object. So this i, this variable, is going to become the data of each object when we run, when we run the, the loop. What you see here at the bottom is just to, to redraw the, the screen. And this is just to give you the chance to see. It's just the, a delay for you to see the change that you saw just before. But see, I'm, I'm saying this object called Q is equal to i, the data of i. And, and what is the data of i? The, well, it's going to change on each iteration of the loop. It's going to change through all the selected objects. So wh what you saw before is what happened. So that's a very, uh, very useful uh, tool for programming. And then if you put an if statement, so it's going to be the same. We have the for loop here. And the if is saying, when this data is equal to Susan, the name of the data is equal to Susan, then you put the scale at 2. So you will see Susan now has a, a scale by 2. Otherwise, else, do nothing. Just keep it like a scale by e equal to 1. So another example, if we change Susan by icosphere and we press play, you can see how it changed. And when it, when, it gets, when it got to the ice quest fair, the scale was 2 2. So those are the, the mainly the two structures that I usually use for coding in Blender. And, and it, you might ask, but how do you get all this line of code here? Well, you can easily go to the, you select the object, go to the property that you are looking for, you right click, and then you can copy the full data path. And then you paste it here. And then you just basically, you paste it here, equal to 2, and that's it. You can run this line here in the, in the console and press Enter, and it's going to do the change for you. Yeah, I usually, this console for me is very useful. I, I even use this as a calculator. When I open my, my Blender uh, project, I make a new window, a, a small one, and then here you can do math, you can do put sine, cosines, everything. This is very useful. 
and I use it in every single project, even if I'm not coding. Um, OK, now we are going to see the demonstration how we are going to take all these selected anchors, and we are going to position it exactly where they have to go. And you can see here the, the for loop. Well, here there is any for loop if statement, but that's because I want to grab the object that don't have any children, um, because that's, that's the master object. And then another for loop that is essentially saying, if you find an object within, within this uh, area, so in x, in x location and y location, make it equal. So I press play, and then all the anchors <laughs> went to the, the, exact, uh, the exact location. So that's a, that's a win. And now, the next challenge will be to provide in an Excel sheet all those, uh, the list of all the anchors with the property that I mentioned before. Like, oops, going back. Going forward again, okay. Okay, wh what you see here is the coordinates of the project, because as I mentioned, it was eastern, uh, northern, eastern, and they have to be like the global coordinates, so I just, I just used that one because that came with the IFC folder. And then, okay, another if statement, another for statement with an if statement just to grab the, the parents with um, just the parent, and then here, a for a, a statement. And in this one, I'm going to get the length of the anchor. So you can see children, children, and dimension, because that's the, the length of this object here. And I need, I need the length of the bottom object. And after some tweaking for the, uh, the values. And then here is when I'm writing, see, write lines. Is it, here it is where I, where, when I write the lines in, in my Excel sheet. But it's not an Excel sheet. It's a CSV file. And when I press play, look, it took like maybe one or two seconds to provide a list of 315 anchors with all the values that I needed. Thank you. <laughs> That's it, my celebration. It was getting happier each time that something like this happened. And then, well, of course, we need, we need to show all these anchors in, the, in, a, in a drawing. And, and to do that, I use Blender again. Because with a, with a few lines of code, I can make a label for each anchor, and then uh, position that uh, label uh, close to the, the object that is going to be labeled with this distance. So you can always change the distance. I want the label to be a little bit higher. So location 0 is x, location 1 is y, and location 2 is z. So what I'm saying is like make the label at this distance from the original and make this label at this distance from the original in the z axis. So when you press play, see all the labels appear, and then yeah, you have to tweak it a little bit to make it more uh, readable. And, and then that's it. Then you, well, you can, you can export this one as a, a, an image and then just put it in a PDF file, and that's what I did. <coughs> we have other software to do drafting, but those software don't do this. And then the third challenge, which is the, I think was the main one, it was about communication, because if you remember the supports, Oops, go back. If you remember the, the support, each support is holding the bridge, and there are some loads that the, the supports are taking, the, the forces of the bridge. And as you move forward, those forces are going to change during the launching. But how, how you will show that to the operational team? Operational team, they need this information because they need to know uh, what kind of jacks are we using to, to hold the bridge at each location. So we have supports here, support here. And we get this information from the, um, the engineer's team in this way. <laughs> Very, as you can see, it's no, you can see the full picture of what is happening during the launching. 
<clears throat> so in this one, I think we can use, at the moment, I'm not sure, you, because this one was a pre-geometry node that was like two years ago, and geometry node wasn't available. But I think now with geometry node, you can, you can extract information from a CSV file. I'm, I'm not sure, but I did it using Python. And essentially here, I put this like wrong in the console, and that's because um, I just wanted to extract all, all that data and make it a list in Python. And what you have to mind is like each column has a number, and that's what I'm, what I'm doing. The, the, this is another very useful structure. It's called a function in Python. So when you do, when you do a function, it, that is something that you want to repeat each time. And then, as you can see, as I put it there in, in, the, in the console, I can get all the data that I need by, just by repeating, copy-pasting this one, changing the, the number, and then I will get the column where I need the information from. And then, yeah, after I have all the data in, in Python, I mean in Blender, then I can link all that data to objects in the scene. Like you see, I have an arrow here, which is essentially a plane, and, and the tip of the arrow. So what is happening is that with this script, depending on the distance of the launching, it's going to link that distance to the value of the load, and it's going to be, it's going to change the scale of this plane, and it's going to change the, the, the location of this arrow. And what you see here is just a func functions that I defined before, and I just keep, just copy, paste, copy, paste. One thing that you have to be careful is make sure that you have all the data of your object uh, well labeled because you need to find it later, later on. And well, that something for sure is that the distance between two objects can be easily defined using geometry nodes, both to show uh, the load from a list. I, I still don't know if that's something that it can be in geometry node. But at the moment, yeah, I, I can, you can do it using Python. And this is an structure that you need if you want to run the script each time that you change the frame, it's called handlers. And you can see when I, when I change the, the timeline, I get the, the values of the load, and I get the scales of the, of the arrow changing accordingly in all the location. So that's, that's been very helpful for the operational team and the, the, the civil team. All, all, all the design team, they are loving this. And it's so accessible that they don't believe it. I tell them, you don't need admin rights to install Blender. Just go download the, the portable version, get it in your computer, and open my file. You can do whatever you want with my file. Just pre press click to, uh, to make the script running, and then you will see everything that I'm showing you. But <clears throat> this, this has too much potential. And and one of the potential that I can see that is going to have a, a, a big value in the construction industry is that you can get the, the data from a crane. You can get the PDF online from a specific crane. Because the capacity of a crane, it changes depending on the configuration of it. If your crane has the boom extended so long, the capacity is reduced. And the same with the angle. So by, by having all this data, and, and look, it's just a, maybe 10 lines of code, putting some custom, uh, custom, custom properties. You can see how the capacity of the, of the crane changes automatically. And I'm not using rigging here. It's just drivers and, and nothing complicated. This object has all these custom properties. And this object, they have drivers links to each of these properties. And yeah, let me tell you that if people in the working industry realize that how easy it is to do this one, that could become like a very popular in, 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 the, in the industry. Um, well, after doing all this, 
I can say that I am happy again. And I just want to finish <laughs> my presentation with a quote from a, a very a famous Greek philosopher. Give me a for loop and an if statement, and I will call the world. I came with it. Thank you. One second. I need to do the selfie. I know that's a record, sorry. <laughs> Photo. That's, I, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it.